Hi, I'm uh, Gerard Leary with uh, Drawing with Gerard. We've been gone for a couple of months, but we're back. So belated Happy New Year to everyone. Um, I thought I'd start off the new year with um, going back to basics. We're just going to go back to some fundamental drawing, and we're going to do it in graphite, which is uh, the regular pencils that we use in school. HB are number two pencils. I'm going to go through some of the material and uh, just show you what you can get. Um, yeah, the HB pencils are great. I usually have four or five of them. Um, I like to use, I don't know if you can see that. These are metal pencil sharpeners. They're two hole pencil sharpeners. They're a lot better than the plastic ones. You seem to, um, you don't seem to break as many pencils as you would normally. All these uh, pencils obviously have erasers, but I use these pink erasers and then I use these uh, plastic erasers. It doesn't matter what you have. It's um, what you feel, feel like using. To get a lot of graphite off the page, I just use a regular small brush. And this is called a uh, utility knife. You just have to be careful because it's a razor blade. And I use it sometimes to sharpen pencils always away from you. You can get a nice edge on a pencil. And um, I know we're not supposed to talk about stores, but any of the big box stores, any, any hardware store would probably have a utility knife. Um, the other thing, I, I don't know if you can see these. These are called graphite pencils, and I'll just explain how they work. Um, you can buy them in a package of about 15. Again. You might not be able to get them at a retailer, but you could probably get them at, um, at any of the art stores. And there's, there's some in the area you just have to look. So they go from uh, B's, which are a soft lead, to HB, which are the pencils that we're using, to H's, which are hard lead, and they're uh, really good for very fine lines. I think I have covered everything. Oh, when you're blending, These are uh, rolled up cardboard, and they're called blenders or cotillion. And um, you'll see the tip has got some graphite on it. You can just wipe the tip, and the graphite will transfer onto a piece of, uh, piece of scrap paper. These are great for blending uh, shadows or blending um, hard lines. Really great. If you also want to blend, you can use a white pencil, which is neutral, or these are called uh, colorless blenders. There's no pigment in them, and you could probably buy these at one of the local art stores. So what we're going to do is, I don't know if we're right here. Maybe we're right here. This is a, a basic book that I got. You might be able to get it at the library, or you might be able to buy it online. It's called uh, pencil drawing. It's just graphite drawing. And we're going to use this. It's a good book, just uh, pencil drawing uh, by Walter F Foster. So see if you can write that down and see if you can find it in the library. Um, just I know the libraries aren't open yet. Um, but you, you might be able to buy it online. I think it's about maybe $12 or something like that. 750, what a bargain. 750. It's a great book for basics. So I guess I'm going to move this stuff off the page. And then we're going to just go through the basics. So that's that's the equipment um, you can use. This is also a 50 sheet. Oh no, it's more than that. This is a hardcover sketchbook. I got this at an art store, but you can buy these books probably at any of the um, um, drug stores or any of the retail stores. They're usually 50 sheet books. They're not very expensive. And that would uh, outfit you for what we're going to do in this course. So now, if we're shooting over my shoulder, I'm going to put on my glasses and we're going to go to some basic stuff. So I'm going to talk about hand positions. 
So the way most people write, or the, I'm a lefty, so I went to parochial school and I learned the Palmer method. So that's the way most of us learn to write holding the pencil close to the tip between your index finger um, and your thumb. And it's mostly in the wrist. But when you draw, this is a little bit different. It's like holding a golf club differently or a baseball bat differently. You can, you can use your whole arm when you draw, and you can hold it overhand or underhand and I'm going to show you just some steps. Here we have them here. I'm going to go over these steps. So these are just uh, practicing exercises so you can get used to using these new positions. It's going to be tricky at first, but if you practice, you'll get them. These are just ovals that um, I learned in grammar school. And it's just a circle. But uh, it's good if you just try. To hold your pencil at the end of the tip, you get a lot more uh, rotation or leverage because you can incorporate your whole arm into it. You're not going to get as tired. Just a practice page. You can go over things. You just want to. Um, Get a feel for using the position a little bit differently. And th this is grass, so this is just technique. You can practice. Just have a practice page and keep drawing different lines. You can use different pressure. I think you can see this OK. So you can go from wider lines, almost minuscule lines. The same thing. You can use the side of your pencil to get more graphite on the page. We might not be using these techniques today, but eventually we will if we're doing landscaping. Landscape drawing, not landscaping. A little bit too early for landscaping. This is just a mound uh, uh, of um, circles. It's pretty relaxing to do this. But it's really good for you to try a couple of different ways. I like holding it at the tip, unless I'm doing detail work. It's not as fatiguing. And it's good to uh, kind of master this different um, technique. Took me a, a while, but I just practiced until I, I felt I got it pretty well. I hope you guys can see OK. And if I'm going too fast for you, you can get in touch with me. Um, I'll give you my email rather than my phone. I'm at uh, Gerard, lowercase letters, G-E-R-A-R-D, number 1616, lowercase golden, G-O-L-D-E-N drive, D-R-I-V-E, at Gmail. So if you have any suggestions of what you'd like to see, or if we're going too fast, or if you have any questions about the material we're using or the techniques, I'm going to try to really go slow, Lee. Not cover a lot of ground, just so you feel OK. This show is, um, is taped. We don't show live. So hopefully 
we usually have it on a couple times a week. Here's, here's just a rectangle. So you can d draw the rectangular lines and then just fill in the ends. And there isn't any reason why, maybe it's tough on, on the angle of the camera, but you can move your paper around so you can, um, you can attack the page at a different angle if you'd like. These are great exercises, they really are. I'm trying to keep them a little bit different. This kind of looks like a, um, what do they call those things with earthquakes? Richter scale? Or uh, in the hospital? Monitor, cardiac monitor or something like that. So if you're flatline, you're dead. Sorry. Again, you can move your hand down if you're doing a lot more detail work. Now, circles, which we're going to do some basic forms. So if you're doing a freehand, I like to just draw continuously in the same area just so I get a feel of drawing a circle. It doesn't have to be right all the time. But again, repetition is going to make you a lot more accurate. The thing about drawing is you need to have a lot of patience. It's very relaxing. I don't know if you know if you can hear my, um, I play Pandora on my phone and I usually play easy listening music. It just helps me. I get in the zone, and uh, it's just music and drawing. I find it really relaxing. Now this next figure is kind of like a flying saucer. So all you need to do is draw a straight line, and then just try to do an arc. And if you don't get it, to your satisfaction the first time. Remember, you have an eraser on here. And below is almost like, oh, sorry. It's almost like a flying saucer. So another arc line. Now what I'm going to do is a add value, and I'll show you what that means on the next page, but you can take the side of your pencil very lightly, fill in this section right here. I hope you can see this okay. Very light pressure. Now in the bottom, a little bit darker pressure. It, it kind of creates a shadow. These are good exercises to, um, to just repeat. All they are is exercises for you to feel comfortable with the pencils and with the posture using the pencils. You can go over these. Um, when you look at the uh, tapes, you can go over these as many times as you want. The next figure is kind of uh, a triangle. So you're drawing this line, and then this line, and then this line, and then we want to make it curved. I hope you can see that okay. Now, again, we're going to add value to this. So you can turn the uh, paper around if you want to. But I use the side of the pencil, so I'll make the top a little darker. And gradually, it's a little bit lighter as you come down. And you're going to see the contrast between dark and light. 
And when they, they're together, they're opposite each other. You can really see the difference. And to add more of a dimension, we're going to cast the shadow. So the light would be coming in this direction. And the shadow is behind the pyramid. So again, you would just want to outline what the shadow is. And then very lightly, fill it in. You want to make the shadow darker than the subject itself. And you'll see how that um, added value gives more of a three dimension to a, a flat drawing. Again, these are just practice exercises. The next one is kind of like a log. So what I do is I start off here with just a circle. Then I want to create a line here. Another line here. And I want to make the illusion that there is a circle. So it kind of looks like a log. Now to give it some depth, we're going to make like a recess. So there's, there's a tunnel effect. And you can do that by just making it dark around the edge, like a shadow inside, and leave a little bit of light. So you'll see that went from a just a circle to now there's an illusion that There's depth. It's hollow. You can go through it. Then to add more value, you can just draw slight lines, or you can put even like a naughty pine or something like that. So you make it much more natural. You can put a little bump, bump on the log. And the lines don't have to be all the way through linear. You can just leave them separated. So that's it. Light source. This is the illusion you want to create that the log is empty or hollow. OK, you can go over this several times um, because, again, the shows are repeated, and the way that you find out about the show is, is just go on WCAT and just stroll down to the schedules, and you'll see all the programs that are scheduled. Again, this program is called Drawing with Gerard, and generally um, it's broadcast a few times a week, sometimes I'd say at least two or three times a week. So that's all you need to do. And uh, just practice this page. This is an exercise page. Um, you can go over it a lot of times until you feel comfortable with the new position of holding a pencil this way. It's a lot less stress on your fingers. But it takes a while for you to feel comfortable with it. OK, we're going to go on to the next page. If I'm going too fast, Again, you can uh, just email me, and uh, you know if you have any criticism or any suggestions, just email me at uh, Gerard G E R A R D sixteen number one six Golden G O L D E N Drive D R I V E at Gmail. Okay, this looks like a hockey puck to me, so it's just very. This line is not total. You want to try this line. If you don't get it perfectly the first time, don't worry about it. You can go over it again. And then there's the bottom line. I mean, the line that's closest to you. I made a mistake on this. I'm just going to erase that part. I love erases. Oh, practice what you preach. I know you might you might have just a regular brush around the house. It's not anything special. But again, 
to make it more of a dimension, you can just So that drawing shadows just didn't come out that well. It's going to give me a chance to um, show you how blenders and Q-tips work. So again, this is a blender that you could probably, you probably won't be able to get this at, you know, a drugstore. But um, I guess I can say Michael's is one in Everett. It's a really good art store. So the blender, you want to blend the graphite. What it does is it, it just pushes it into the paper. So it kind of fills in the paper itself. And it adds more to the dimension of your drawing. Again, you can just experiment with how this works. You can also uh, use Q-tips. They're pretty good. Q-tips are a little bit more accessible than those blenders. Or if you have a white pencil. White really is the absence of pigment. So you're not going to leave anything. It's just it's going to help you blend. Or these pencils are called colorless blenders. And this is an extender. So this pencil is pretty short. So you can get an extender so you can hold it easily right down to the tip. And again, there's no pigment in that colorless blender. So you can use that also to blend in the graphite, or if you can use this in colored pencil drawing too. Colorless blender, cardboard blender, Q-tip, white pencil, I like to use, um, get, get all the graphite off the page because it smears. And it's really a good idea, and I didn't bring one, but it's always a good idea to use, I'm, I'm just going to take a page. I'm going to take this page. So you don't, um, a lot of um, graphite, accumulates on your, your baby finger because it's against the page. So you can use um, just a piece of paper so your hand is not going on the page and you're not going to get smudge marks. Just a technique you can practice. All you need is just a regular piece of paper. Again, if you don't have all the materials, just remember Q-tips, regular number two pencils. You probably have a few at home, but you can buy them at most retailers. You can buy them at most uh, pharmacies. You may not be able to get these very easily. These are metal pencil sharpeners. They're a lot better because they don't break the tips off. Metal is a lot better than plastic when it comes to sharpening. Utility knife, most hardware stores have them. You just have to be really careful when you open them up and always away from you if you want to sharpen something. I'll leave that open for a second. Regular eraser. These are called plastic erasers. And Prismacolor is a manufacturer who makes colored pencils. So I think that's about it. I won't go into these pencils 
so much because we're not going to use them right now. I just want to concentrate on the basics. Okay, so here's an exercise that I'm going to show you one dimension. One dimension is just flat. This is kind of an oval, looks like a baked potato. I'm really not good at drawing figures, so I have to draw them over again. But that's just a one-dimensional figure. This is the same figure. I mean, it's not perfectly the same. But it's kind of um, an oval. It kind of looks like a baked potato. And how this is different is we're going to add value to this. How do you do that? Side of the pencil. See where I'm holding it at the tip? Very easy. Again, that book, Pencil Drawing by Walter Scott, all these exercises are in that book. Side, very low pressure. You can vary the pressure. It's going to give the uh, illusion of curvature. Kind of like the curvature of like an Easter egg or something like that. Or a football or a baked potato. Now, to add more dimension, you want to put a shadow. And the shadow is just making an outside line. See where it's finished earlier there and it's later back there? This is going to just add to the dimension of the drawing. Shadows are really, really good. There's a shadow up here, too. I didn't do that figure. I'm going to go back to it. But if you practice this a few times, and you'll see what the difference is. is. This is one-dimensional, and this is three-dimensional. It just gives you more to look at because of the value that you created with the lines, with the shadowing. Again, just watch the uh, shows. And I don't know. I, you guys are pretty smart. I'm a low-techer, but you can probably um, record these. I'm going to go back up to this drawing. So basically, you just draw the lines. My lines aren't perfect. Now, I just want to fill in the face or the side of this. It's like a box or a rectangle. Again, you can vary the pressure as you go along. I left this white. I put a little sh shadowing in the in a corner. Now I, I put a shadow in front, so the light source. I'm just drawing how the light would approach this. The shadow is going to be behind the object. So I would draw a line that comes out. And then it kind of goes behind the end of the box. This is tricky, um, getting variable pressure. It's a matter of just a lot of practice. But these will come in handy. These techniques you, you'll be employing as you advance in drawing itself. These look pretty cool. Now, these exercises here are just how you can use a pencil different ways. You turn this pencil on its side. So you're getting more contact with the surface of the paper because you have more graphite or lead going down. If you want to make a straight line, you can go back to how you usually draw, I mean, write writing. 
and this is uh, where the pencil is always coming straight down or perpendicular to the paper itself. It's, it's called a hard line. This is, again, really close. You can move up on the paper where you want to get almost all of the side of the pencil down on the paper itself. I'm just going to draw, I'm going to put a little graphite down. Graphite is the lead in these, uh, obviously, graphite pencils. So I'm using the side of the pencil, and I'm just going to lay down some graphite. I hope that isn't too light so you can, can you see it, hopefully. And again, you can vary the pressure. I'm going to put a little bit more pressure down here so it comes out a little bit darker. I hate these spiral pages because I'm lefty. I should have done it the other way. Now I'm going to put my pencil down and pick up my blender. Now watch what happens to that figure when we start blending it. We're spreading the graphite out and it's being uh, absorbed more by the page. So you can get a softer technique. I did it up here too, I did that this morning. So you can go from um, dark to light, from big to small, again, you can see the uh, graphite on the tip of the blender. If you take a scrap piece of paper, or you can take a towel, a paper towel, and you can transfer that graphite off here onto the paper towel or onto a, a scrap paper. And you can use this a lot of times. I love these. You get to work with them, they're really good. Okay, so we're going to go to the next figure, and this is just about, this is kind of an upside down leaf. So what you want to do is, you want to take the stem and draw it straight up and curve to the top of the leaf. Off the stem, there are veins. And the veins go to the tip. Of, these are called lobes, the end of the leaves, the leaves. And off the stem, just like arteries in the body, you can draw them in. Now, to add a little dimension, right at the tip of the uh, stem, you can make it a little darker. And on the outside of the leaves, you can make it darker, or at the tip of the leaf, you can make it a little bit darker, and then vary it. This is just technique you're going to practice. It doesn't have to be perfect the first time. But, you know, if you watch this or you uh, record it, just watch it a few times. You'll get it. It's a good technique to learn. Again, it really depends on how you want to um, use the pressure. But this is adding dimension. I mean adding value, I should say. Incidentally, there's a lot of free tutorials on YouTube. And you can type in anything, like how to draw a, a dog or, or a landscape or anything you want. Uh, waves, the ocean, the sky. 
You can get those in um, graphite, black and white, or in color, or in watercolor. Most of them are free, but there are artists that you can subscribe to. I subscribe to uh, someone in England, and it really helps me. And they're very inexpensive to subscribe. But I, I just go online and take a look at some of the tutorials. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is, is this is really a cool thing. And I'll try to draw it for you. This is going to take a while. This is really a drop of water. And I'll show you how to do this. It takes a long time, but it's a cool thing to draw. So what we're going to do is we're just going to draw that kind of oval. And again, you know, if your oval isn't to your satisfaction, draw it again or use your eraser. Again, the lines don't have to be hard all the way around. This is really a nice optical illusion. It's going to take a while to draw. But you can practice this a lot of times. Do you see this reflection? So I'm going to draw this reflection. Take a look at the lines, how they work. That is just making the, the drop transparent so the light's passing through it and it's passing down here. Now on the top, there's also a little bit of light. This might not be perfect. It takes a while to draw. It's really kind of a, a tricky drawing. But if you go on to uh, drawing a drop of water, there's like a 22 minute tutorial on this. I'm going to change this a little bit because I want to make it a, I want to make it a little bit more oval. That's the basic form. Again, if I'm going too fast, let me know on the website on the, I mean my email. Or if you can, record the program or it should be on a few times during the week. So now you're going to see variable pressure that's going to create different effects. So this is one dimensional. This becomes three dimensional because of the illusion. I'm going to try to create that illusion. So I'm going to choke up on the pencil and with just a little bit of pressure, I want to make some contrast between the white and the dark. And I told you there's another line up here, like a, another reflection. Notice the angle of this pencil. It's kind of like at a maybe 45 degree angle to the paper itself. We're going to go over this a few times. It's not going to be perfect. I did this this morning. It's not perfect. But you can practice. Again, if you look at the darkness, gradually gets lighter and lighter and lighter. It's a nice effect. 
And on the bottom, you'll see in the side, it's lighter. So I don't want you to get discouraged. If, if you're having a problem um, at first, just keep at it. You, you're, you're absolutely going to improve. And if you've drawn for like an hour or so, walk away from it. Just leave it. And um, you know, come back to it the next day. You're going to have fresh eyes. And you're going to be able to see things a little bit different. Or just watch the, um, the um, show itself. And if you watch it a few times, you're going to start to see things that you might not see. Drawing makes you um, your vision a lot more acute because you're going to start to see things that you normally wouldn't see. Again, I'm just going to make very lighter. So this is going to be gradually, but remember on, the, on this side, we're going to leave it white. Nice and easy. I'm going to go over this a few times. This is just a really good exercise in optical illusion. So that's why I use it. I've never really perfected this myself, but this is kind of advanced. Now I'm going to go back and get my blender. Again, you can use Q-tips. With the blender, it's just pressure. And you guys know how to clean the blender just using a cloth or a paper towel or transferring the graphite onto paper. This is all about pressure. I like to have a lot of sharp pencils. Now you're going to see a contrast here. Nice and easy. Nice and easy on this side. Go back up here. Make the contrast between the white of the reflection and the dark. It'll make this white pop. It's the contrast. Again, if you have any questions at all, just email me. Or if you have any suggestions or anything that you would like to see in graphite drawing, just let me know, and uh, I'll try to accommodate anything. I'm putting a lot of pressure on the side of this, and you're going to see how the oval kind of pops. Again, if you make a mistake, don't worry about it. You can use an eraser. Okay, there's another reflection down here. So I'm going to kind of very light, soft line. I'm going to draw it in. And then with the side of my pencil, 
I'm going to put some shadowing in. Also up here, there's some reflection. Side of the pencil, very light. Now I'm just going to push out so this dark becomes lighter. And once I have enough of that, I'm going to blend it. This is kind of a real challenge to draw, but it's a great illusion when you get it. A little bit better and and this is a tutorial online if you just type in on like Google uh, how to draw a, a, um, a water drop I think we have about maybe 10 minutes or so. I'm going to try to finish this, this off right here. But you see the contrast between the white and the dark. Those contrasts make the white pop. Not so much on this side because there's shadowing. We want to kind of make the dark outline of the oval blend. So again, less pressure gradually. And at the end, we're going to use an eraser to make it like that, a lot more oval. A difficult exercise, but a fun exercise to um, get better at. It's a beautiful illusion. I haven't done a great job with it, but I think you'll get the basic idea. Again, the darker the line, the more of the contrast I'm going to use a blender again. I'm not practicing what I preach. I should be using this. Okay, side of the blender. Nice and easy, easy pressure. You see this line is going to be coming softer in the contrast between the dark and the white as this blends out becomes more visible. And we can push that graphite really out pretty far so the blending looks a lot better. Again, sometimes people get discouraged because it's, um, they think it's beyond them, but, you know, this is all practice. Again, we want to push out some of this darkness. 
so it becomes more gradual and it'll make the oval um, more dimensional. There's a lot of really, really great technique in it, and you just have to practice this. There's a lot, a lot to it, but if you do this two or three times, you're really going to improve. And this is one of the classic examples of adding value and creating the third dimension. This is different than this. And I did that intentionally just to show you that. For some reason, I don't do everything the same way. I mean, I miss things. Probably because I'm lefty. But I see the nice contrast between the dark and the white. Not so much on this side because there's shadowing here. Now I'm just going to take an eraser and kind of cut off some of the edges of this to make it a lot more uniform in its roundness. All set? Okay. Got about five minutes left. So we've covered a lot in this, uh, I think, 45 minutes or 50 minutes. Again, I'm going to go back to the brush and just sweep all the, the graphite off the page because it'll smear. So those are, that's a great exercise to do. You're going to get better at it. If I did this three or four times, I'd get better at it. But it's just an exercise in understanding contrast between dark and light. Actually, I think this is better than that. But the idea is there. If you practice this three or four times, you're going to be amazed at how good you are. It's like learning a magic trick because this is really all about creating an illusion, taking something that's really flat and um, making it a third dimension. Again, I'm almost finished here. I just want to show you this book again, Pencil Drawing by Walter Foster. You could probably buy it online. It's a great book with basic ideas. Again, a lot of the stuff um, we covered in the first couple of pages. All about tools and material, warming up with the pencils. You can see how to hold the pencils. So that's it. That's a lot for the first lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, if you have an opportunity, remember you just need these number two pencils, the graphite pencils. If you have a plastic sharpener, great, but I would definitely invest in a metal sharpener. These are pink erasers. You can get these most places. Utility knife. I'm going to kill myself. I don't remember how, oh, you close it right there. There's a little of that release. Just make sure your fingers are out of the way. And you can pop these, um, these blades out. I'll just show you. It's like a razor blade.
and they lock into place. This is a particularly really good utility knife. It's called a Husky. I think I got it at Home Depot. Okay, gang, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. And uh, if you have any questions, you can get me on my email. And um, hopefully, we're going to try to do this once a week. So, again, feedback. Email me. If it's too difficult, just give me an email. Let me know, and I'll e email you back. And, again, if you have any suggestions or um, any questions about technique or uh, material, just let me know. See you next time.